I think we're live right now. I'm speaking clearly, and this should work. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Yes, we are live. Hello, everyone. I'm Simon Preston, and welcome to Reggae Boys Commentary. Thank you so much for tuning in to another video on this channel. I'm going to get to the details of this quite shortly. Let me know, you guys, if you can hear me in the comments. Would really, really appreciate it. If you can hear me, let me know. Travis, can you hear me? King Expert, can you hear me? Testing the audio right, right now. Good evening to you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Okay. Big up, big up, big up. Okay. So, you all will remember Daniel Gordon. He has received the UEFA a coaching license and you might say what does the uefa co a coaching license what does that mean well the uefa a coaching license is one level below the uefa pro license and it allows holders to be head coaches of youth teams up to the under 18 level reserve teams also known as b teams for top flight clubs and also men's professional second tier clubs and in addition to that it allows them to be assistant coaches to teams in the top flight this is different from the UEFA B license and the UEFA Pro license. The UEFA B license is one level below the A license, and it allows holders to be head coaches of amateur clubs, youth teams up to under 16, and assistant coaches for pro clubs. The UEFA Pro license is the highest coaching certification ever <laughs> in Europe, and it allows you to take charge of national teams in the Champions League, Europa League, you guys get the drift. You guys get exactly where I'm getting from, where this is concerned. You guys know exactly what I mean here. So what are we driving at? Well, here's the deal. Daniel Gordon was in a class with Matt Hummels, Thomas Muller, Jerome Boateng, Michael Ballack. Now, you guys might be saying, okay, all right, I understand where you're going with from here and how everything is shaping up here. What does this mean? Daniel scored the highest in theory out of all of these. Can you imagine that a Jamaican, a Jamaican international, scored the highest in theory out of all of these? And he had the second highest practical score. Come on, guys. That deserves a like. Give this video a like. Come on. That deserves a like. A Jamaican international scored the highest in theory and the second highest in practical of, out of all the creme de la creme German football players. So what does this mean now? So Daniel Gordon is still playing club football. He's playing for Kalsha, and he believes that this could be his last year of his professional career. He could be offered a, another one-year extension, but as I mentioned in a previous video, Daniel started his career at... Borussia Dortmund. This was at the time when you had Stephen Pienaar, Matt Hummels, etc., etc. Daniel is, I don't want to say like the hacker of like the Javon Watson of Borussia Dortmund, but he's likable. Everybody likes him, from the canteen lady to the physio to the kit men to the players. He's a likable guy. So representatives of Borussia Dortmund would love to have him back at the club and this would be in the sense of being an under 18s head coach however the current club is at Karsha that he's spent 10 years with would love for him to be the assistant manager starting next season so regular boys fans how do you process all of this this man is about to be one of the most qualified jamaican coaches ever
ever. Daniel Gordon, the same man who many people say is the worst player to ever played for Jamaica, which is quite harsh. You guys never saw Ramel Sheriff play for Jamaica against France in 2014. That was a woeful performance in my opinion. Anyways, what do you think, Rico Boys fans? Should he go, should he take the opportunity to go to Borussia Dortmund and be the head coach of an under-18 team? Or should he stay on at Karlsruhe and be the assistant manager? Go somewhere where he's loved, stay where he has been and continue his legacy? What says you? What do you all think, Rico Boys fans? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Let's see what you all think. Let us go through the comments, shall we? Why not? Travis says, big up. King Expert says, good night, Simon. Yannick Davis says, hello, bro, bro. Cam Grant says, can hear you. Amani Kenner says, we're hearing. Yo, O'Neill Bryce says, audio is good. Coaches, that's loud and clear. Ian Campbell, loud and clear. Great, great. Good night. Therese Mitchell says, thumbs up. What happened to Casey Palmer? Okay, nothing happened to him. Nothing happened to Casey. He has a passport. He's not been called up. You can only call up 23, 24 names, though, can you? I could also say, okay, where's Greg Lee? I could say, where's Amari Bell? I could say, okay, where's Gareth McClary? But guess what? You have a pool, and you pick from that pool. Which one top I have? Let's move on. Will fans be out for our home games? That decision is still to be decided. Kyan Grant says, Muller, big coach in the future. Yeah, Muller will be a big coach. But yes, Tapa has the B. Simon, Johnson said he's not coming because the coach leave out Ravel Morrison. Are you talking about Daniel Johnson? I'll have to double check that. Travis says, we would give Gordon a job right now. Gordon a job to coach the reggae boys? No, not right now. Daniel's English is not perfect. I wouldn't even say my English is perfect, but to be quite frank with you, Daniel uh, is not ready just yet. I do see the potential for him to be involved in the national program in the future because of his qualifications, especially at youth level, and he has a son that is absolutely wicked. Len Gordon, he's like an absolute G. Remember the name, Len Gordon. Jeez. Yeah, he's going to be a baller, honestly. Wicked baller. And J.A. would like for him to be a head coach. Amani Bell says get rid of Tapa. Travis says he played five times for Jamaica, one goal. Yep, I know. He scored against Cuba. His debut for Jamaica came against Mexico. Yep, Mexico, 2 into 13. He played against Mexico. He played against USA. He played against Honduras. That's three games. He also played against Cuba and played against Venezuela. So that will be five caps. Traveled with us to the Copa America in 2015. Mr. Galaxy, if Reva was left out, why didn't we call her a replacement? I don't know, like Casey Palmer. Well... Let's just say some people are not sold on Mr. Palmer. Kay Parks is talking about Snibble Bell. Travis says rather Daniel Gordon's dead car show. For me, this is my personal preference. Daniel is likely to stay at Karlsruhe, but I would prefer him to go to Dortmund. Why? Because he's going to be in an environment where he's going to deal with 14, 13 year old guys at the under 18 level because he knows in another two years from now, those players are two, three years, those players are going to go to the first team. And that is something I would love to see employed at the national system where we give debuts to players to get a Reggae Boys debut at 17, 18, like. We've seen with Georgina James at 17. I think Kane Paris was 
17, 18 there about to Jabane Brown was 18. Jadine White was 18 as well. Luton Shelton was 19. So I'm all for I'm all for giving those those opportunities, honestly. Rudy Kane says go to Fort Monday. They play top flight week in way thought. Okay. Nicolene Edlin says Mattox needs a call up. Probably in the November window. Last read says big up Simon. Big up. For those who are curious, Tapa has a CONCACAF B license, not UEFA B. That is correct, sir. And as we know, UEFA. Okay. The highest in football is UEFA Pro license. One tier below is UEFA A license. One tier below that is UEFA B license. Joby Makanov, UEFA A license. Adrian Mariapa, working on the A license. Darren Moore, has a UEFA Pro license. Michael Johnson has a UEFA Pro license. Savan Hines has a UEFA A license. Jason Ewell has a UEFA A license. Chris Powell has a UEFA A license. Okay, guys. Hope that clears things up. David Johnson, formerly of Manchester United and a reggae boy, has a UEFA B license. I'm trying to think who else. Ricardo Fuller has a B license. Yeah. Is Tyron Marshall interested in the spot in the near future? To coach, of course, he's made his interests very clear to the public and on the record that he would love to be part of the national setup in a coaching respect. Where's Alex Marshall? Alex Marshall is in Canada right now. Ivor Palmer says, any changes to the squad? Ethan Pinnock out, Jamoy Topi in. So Maria Palaisen higher than Tapa. Ray Baba says, if we, if, if we even lose this game, we'll be better than the last six we played. A little more camaraderie. Don't get what you're saying here. Sometimes I can't understand some of these squads that are selected. There are no suitable covers and players that are picked are often played out of position. You're not the first person to raise that concern. How far is the drop-off from CONCACAF to UEFA? All right. CONCACAF A license is like equivalent to UEFA B. Not in terms of the job description, but in terms of... All right, let me refresh that. Let me do that again. A CONCACAF A license is like a UEFA B license. Not in terms of their job description, but in terms of the process that you have to do to be able to obtain that license. They didn't care better than East by far, Simon. They needs to find the back of the net more often for me. That's my take on the matter. That's what I honestly feel. Honestly, that's what I feel. So, Reggae Boys fans. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Daniel Gordon, would you like to see him coach Jamaica soon? I know many people have been asking about the fans of the National Stadium on Sunday. That decision is still to be made. As the Prime Minister of Jamaica, Andrew Holness, is yet to give the green light. So that is a decision that is still to be made. What is Conquer of B license in comparison? You can coach a national team in your region in the region. And there's a few other perks to it as well. So Mr. Samuels, I'm not disagreeing with you, sir. 
This video is to inform you that Daniel Gordon has joined Joby McEnough and soon to be Adrian Mariapa in a list that is just under Darren Moore, Jason Ewell, Michael Johnson, Chris Powell, that hold superior qualifications. And I think that it's important that we celebrate our own, a Jamaican international, somebody that is still playing football in Daniel Gordon, an individual that is still playing minutes in Daniel Gordon, a player that has represented Jamaica, scored for Jamaica, gone to a tournament with Jamaica, that we celebrate his growth in football. So Daniel Gordon, Danke schön, willkommen, guten Tag, and we're really, really proud of you. Really, really proud of you, Bridgen. Everybody keeps saying that, you know, as a player, he didn't look good, but guess what? If he makes the strides, he's going to be a great coach. Honestly, I can't wait. Daniel Gordon, remember the name because he has tremendous, and I mean tremendous potential. Young, 35, 36, and he's just going places, guys. Bring your boys fans. I see what you did there with green light rhythms. It wasn't on purpose, you know. It's funny because it wasn't done on purpose. I wasn't even thinking that way, but yeah. So big videos to come up this week, the match preview, uh, squad prediction in terms of the starting 11. Big, big videos to come this week, guys. You want to stay tuned for it, all right? I'm going to be pushing out more videos soon. If you haven't already, check out the previous video I did on squad changes. Also, the reaction to Jamaica's 2022 World Cup song, and also who's hot and who's cold going into the October window of World Cup qualifiers. So, regular boys fans, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to Regular Boys Commentary for more content. We keep in this train going. And as Oral Trace is saying, a World Cup we are go. A World Cup we are go. Daniel Johnson, I want Bud Bala. <laughs> Uh, 